Azure OpenAI and Microsoft Fabric, Python, beautiful soup, large language models. Ooh, we got a lot to cover coming up next on Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Monday and Wednesday, we drop our MS Tech Bits. That's where we share some knowledge that we've gained in working with product groups, customers, or anything we found along the way to help make life easier. You're watching one of those right now. Let's get over to that content. I want to start off talking a little bit about what we're going to cover in this. So this was inspired by a blog post by Hitesh Hinduja, uh, exploring Microsoft Fabric, Fabric, Spark, Azure OpenAI, and LangChain, a hands-on case study. Now, it's a really, really interesting blog, but one of the things that Hitesh does is Hitesh scrapes blog announcements about Microsoft Fabric. Um, he uses LMM change models. Uh, he takes that data, he scrapes it in Fabric, he puts it in a text file uh, in blob storage, he imports it into one lake. I don't want to leave Fabric. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize Beautiful Soup to be able to pull in some data from the web, but I want to stay completely in Fabric. I don't want to leave. So that's where we're going to deviate from this blog, but this is a wonderful blog. The link is in the description, so you want to make sure and go check that out. Now, you know what we like to do. Let's head over and start playing around with the demos. I'm in my Fabric workspace, and I'm going to head over to my baseball underscale score lake house that we've created in previous videos. In there, I want to open a notebook, and I'm going to open an existing notebook. I'm going to open my open AI in Fabric. And while I'm in here, now this is where we start. At the very beginning, we're going to start by pulling in some information from Beautiful Soup. So Beautiful Soup, let's talk about that real quick. Beautiful Soup is a Python package that allows you to be able to go out and scrape HTML. Now, in Hitesh's blog, he uses it to be able to grab Microsoft Fabric logs and then eventually ask OpenAI to be able to summarize it. Now, again, I don't want to leave Microsoft Fabric. I want to stay in there. And typically when I use Beautiful Soup, I used array-based values and I'm looking at how can I grab things in a tabular data set because my goal is to have this in a Python data frame that we can then begin to manipulate and use this as our tabular data. So now that I'm back in my Fabric workspace, what I'm going to do is we're going to load this data that we've pulled in and then I want to take a look specifically at that data. Now that I just make sure that I've got the information I want. I, I do a quick print and I can see, yep, I've got all that movie information and I can begin analyzing it. Now, a couple things real quick, because I don't want to leave Fabric, right? But maybe I want to make this files. I can't make it files current in its current format. Why? Because this is a pandas data frame. And what I need to do is I need to convert this to a Spark data frame to be able to use it with all the full functionality that I'd like to be able to. So once I convert it, I can see there's my type. I'm in a PySpark data frame. And now what I can do is I could write this to my files. Again, not leaving Microsoft Fabric. If I take a look and do a refresh, there's my movie info. Coming over to my lake house, I can see my individual CSV files that I've just written out from this data that I've scraped. Fantastic, right? Again, haven't even left Fabric. Maybe I want to make it a, a table within my lake house. I can do that too. Let's go back over to our lake house. Let's check it out and see the preview. And here's my movie data. How fantastic is this? Okay, so back over to our notebook. I can also pip, which is good because I'm going to need to pip to be able to install my LangChain API. Now, if we wanted to use Key Vault, we can do that as well. But what I really want to do is take a second and lay down our premise. So I've got all my data loaded. I've got access to it. I've got it in Fabric in multiple different ways. But really what I want to do is I'd like to see a movie with my wife. Last weekend was Father's Day. We went to the movies and we saw what I wanted to see. Well, this weekend is her birthday. So I'd like to see, can I use this information and can I use my chat GPT-3 model um, using LLM models and, and LangChan to be able to figure out what movie should I take my wife to? So here we are back in Fabric. And what I want to do is I want to take a quick view of my data frame so that way I understand what my columns are so I can ask these questions appropriately. And I'm going to say, 
what movie has the highest user ratings and critic scores to display the movie in uh, description. And wouldn't you know it, the best thing out there rating-wise is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Phenomenal film. I, I love it. Uh, my wife, she would probably be okay with it, uh, to be honest, but I don't think that's what she want to see. So uh, let me figure out what is the name of the movie that the and the scores uh, that the critics love the most. Give me the top 10, because I probably shouldn't take her to a comic book movie for her birthday. Well, this gives me a list. John Wick 4, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Spider-Man Homecoming, Air. Well, hold on a second. Um, Air could be a possibility. Other than that, I'm not seeing a lot that she might really like a whole. I mean, there's nothing really with drama, romance. Let's see. Give me the distinct genres that we have, because I'd like to understand what movie genres we have. And let's see if we can find any of these top 10 movies that correlate with this. But I want to make sure I ask the genre question properly. So I need to understand what are these genres. So when this comes back, I can see, okay, we've got crime, romance, drama, comedy, biography. She likes romance and she likes drama. So let's see what movie names whose genres contain the words romance or drama. Uh, give me a display of the description. So this should hopefully narrow down that list of movies that I can take her to. And what I really need to do is I, I, I want to make sure that it's something that she's going to like. Um, let's see. Flaming Hot, uh, Asteroid City, Bill is Afraid, Creed 3, Air. I, I'm not sure about some of those, but looking at Air, uh, ooh, Michael Jordan. So my wife is from Chicago, and she is a big Chicago Bulls fan. Uh, give me the uh, display of the description of the movie Air. Because what I'd really like to understand is, is this the right movie for us? And I think it could be. I think that this might be. It, it's saying it's a drama. Um, I don't know that it has a lot of romance in it. But looking at this, follows the history of sports marketing executive Sunday and how he led Nike in his pursuit of the greatest athlete of all time, Michael Jordan. Boom! I think we've got our winner right here. I think I'm going to watch Air with my wife this weekend. And we're going to see how that works out. So, hey, thank you, OpenAI. Real quick, before I forget, One Lake integration, right? So on my Microsoft One Lake, if I go into my old lake house, remember, we created files, we created tables. I've got those sitting right there. So let's say this was something that I wanted to be able to grab via Beautiful Soup and then use on my desktop. I got it. So what do we learn? Well, we covered a lot. First off, we're going to see air. I don't think air is in the movie theaters anymore, so I'll probably just cook a nice meal and we'll see that on the couch. And then maybe we'll go out and do something for her birthday. Uh, of course, if she wants to see another movie, she's going to be able to get that because uh, she gets what she wants on her birthday. Uh, she's a great lady. I got to take care of her. Uh, what else did we learn? Fabric. How powerful is fabric? I can execute my Python scripts. I can pull in data from the web. I can save it to my fabric workspace. I can save it to my data lake as a table. I don't even have to leave it. And I have all these capabilities. On top of that, if I save it as a file using one lake, I can immediately access that file on my desktop if I want to be able to grab it. That's great stuff. So just remember, what we did was we used Beautiful Soup. We went out, we grabbed data from the internet, we populated it, a Python data frame. We then took that and we used OpenAI. I already had created my service, but if you want to see that, go check out the other videos that we have specifically on that. I walked through creating the service, getting my API key. This is a slightly different model. I use ChatGPT 3.5. Those of you who are eagled eyes will have picked up on that. Uh, but you know where we like to keep this going? In the comments, sound off. Is there anything you have questions about? Any information you'd like to have? Any follow-ups? We'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Take care of one another and have a great week. Bye. Different season, y'all. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, y'all. 